Alright, so the reason I'm recording today is because, um, well, I can win right now this game of Civ 5, but I'm recording because it's on Deity difficulty, and this is, I guess, the first time I will beat it besides, like, doing the Shoshone trick some time ago, but I didn't record the whole game because I never really planned on it. I mean, because if I recorded the whole game, it'd probably be like my other Civ 5 recordings. And this is like, it's been at least a dozen games, me playing, before I've managed to pull off a victory. Some of the games, most of them I didn't even make it to the end. Some, Most of them I either got knocked out or I was just doing so terribly that I just like quit or like restarted. But this game I'm doing well. I mean, it's turn 212. 1884 AD and I'm going to launch a spaceship. It's probably possible to do it before turn 200. In fact, it's probably possible to do it before turn 190 or 185. It's just that I'm I like I've been saying this. I I I don't really think I'm a good Civ player. I think I'm like somewhat decent, but not like good enough to get it before to turn 200. I'm satisfied where I am now because none of the other AI are. AI are really close to winning. I mean, this is the wrong screen, but if we look at victory progress, we look at science. The second closest AI is the Maya, who I'm not even sure, like, obviously they can get the third booster, and they're probably working on it now, but I'm not sure they have the tech for these last two, and then I'm not even sure Germany or Portugal have the tech for these last three, so. Tourism's a bit closer, actually. Germany... Well, we can look here first. Germany is 4 out of 5, and it's going to take them 30 turns, which is probably close to 15 or 20 to get influential over the Maya, so they'll probably win tourism before anyone else wins spaceship. They're domino over me, of course, but that's because, I mean, I'm not playing with ridiculous bonuses that the deity AI get. We Actually, look, World Congress, no one's close at all. I mean, it's a really a race between Germany and Portugal. But it's not like one AI is all the safe states and they're going to win. So I have time victory enabled, but that's not even a factor really. That's like what, turn 300? So we're technically, if we went all the way to time victory, we're only about two thirds through the game despite, you know, having, can I scroll? Having most of the text, I mean. But yeah. The purpose for this video was, I guess, now that I'm going to be Deity AI, and that I can say I've done that without using, like, any tricks. Even though that's, like, when I launch the spaceship, you won't see the Deity AI achievement, because I got it using the Shoshone trick, but, like, I still have some art some tips that I would give out that I guess, not really tips, but, like, I guess, um, this video is really made to, like, point out the differences and, like, or like some of the things that you would do playing against a deity AI that you normally wouldn't consider for like multiplayer because I mainly play multiplayer. I'm not really a single player guy, but this is just something I felt needs to happen. Like in fact, I'm playing on quick speed. Like people who play single player for like fun, they usually do like longer speeds like epic or marathon. I just do quick because I'm adjusted to it for like multiplayer. But yeah, I guess, yeah, I'm going to explain some of the things that you wouldn't do in like... And there, I didn't play perfectly, so there is some stuff that I'm going to talk about that I didn't do that I think I should have done, but yeah. I guess the one of the first things that comes to my mind that you have to think about is like, I guess the, the main thing I guess would be, or the first thing would be really research agreements. Like research agreements are pretty much never done in multiplayer. But in single player deity, it's an extreme advantage for you to get as many research agreements as possible. Because now, if I try and get a research agreement with someone, they're going to ask for stuff because I'm ahead of them in tech. But early on, when you're still behind, you can get research agreements with probably nearly every single AI. Especially if you're playing on a small map, especially. But if you're, even if you're playing on a standard size map, you probably should be able to. Unless there's an AI that gets, like, knocked out. Sort of like Denmark, I guess, in this case scenario. They're going to lose pretty badly, but... Yeah, um... 
yeah, re I guess even more so, like, you could probably still get research agreements if you manage to fill out Scientific Revolution. It'd be probably worth it to give the AI a bit of stuff if you have Scientific Revolution and you are and you can get research agreements. I could have sworn there's another one. Oh, the Porcelain Tower gives you, um, gives you bonus from research agreements as well. I think it's 50%. I don't know who has it. Probably, pr probably Bismarck. Um, he does not. I don't see it. Pakal does. So, yeah, Pakal, he can probably still get, oh, his capital is in a bit of trouble, but, um, he could probably still get research agreements because he has, um, why the hell didn't he settle here? How did Germany get here? I don't know. I don't question it. The AI is weird, so, but he could probably get, um, he could probably still get research agreements because he gets a bonus or like he'll probably be more willing to I guess I would say because he has a porcelain tower but I'm not really sure if that's how the AI thinks or how it works but another thing I guess the next thing really what's the next thing um, the next thing is probably ideology I would say like you it, when you're playing against daddy AI just look at these tourism stats. You're going to get in be you're going to be influenced. Like whether you like it or not. It's not like multiplayer where you can go tourism you all, and you have no influence. If you go tourism in this or if you go heavy culture, you will still be influenced over. And that's really what decides when you're what decides which ideology you'll choose. You're not just going to go for the ideology that's best for you. You're going to go for the ideology that's not going to give you tons of unhappiness. So like what I actually delayed ideology as much as possible, which is the opposite of what you should do in multiplayer where you should rush ideology. I'm I'm still recording. all right, yeah I am. Good. So like in multiplayer normally what you would do is you would Oxford radio once you finish electricity or you'd beeline industrialization and get factories out. <clears throat> but in this game what I did was I researched so electricity, which you need scientific theory for that. So I went scientific theory, electricity, did it in Oxford radio, I then went industrialization, and I then went fertilizer, and then I got, I was building my factory, so I just went radio anyway, but by the time I got to pick ideology, I was like third or, I think I was third or fourth pick. I think I was fourth. I think it was Germany, Maya, and Austria, exactly in that order, who had ideologies. I do remember. No one changed ideology this game, so Denmark can, but they're going to be off the game, so it doesn't matter, but yeah, so Germany, I, D Germany and Austria, they were, I think, the tourism leaders at the time, and even if Maya was the tourism leader, because Germany and Austria were both order, I went order as well. And I guess I should also probably mention this, not only because of unhappiness, but because of diplomatic relations. Like, I'm friendly with every single world leader. I'm not friendly with Pakal, I'm not friendly with Hard Bluetooth, but I'm friendly with the others because I am have the same ideology. Ideological differences is something that the AI can, takes very seriously. Like, look at my negative modifier for it. We, that's the main negative penalty for this. The main negative penalty for me with Pakal and Harold Bluetooth is having a different ideology. So if your ideology is different from the rest of the world, then not only will you get unhappy, but none of the AI will like you, so they won't trade you luxury resources that you need. So it's better just to wait and delay ideology so you can pick the one that won't give you unhappiness. And I actually have zero, yeah, as everyone with order is zero unhappiness, even me. And I have the least amount of culture, but <clears throat> I guess that's another key difference in single player and like or deity versus multiplayer. Probably the last thing I would say. There's there's one other thing that I was going to talk about. I honestly don't remember. But it was important. I can't remember for the life of me. I honestly don't. No. What what could it have been? Yeah, I don't remember. I'm I'm gonna leave it. 
I don't think it's important, but one thing I will mention is wonder you can't basically in this game you can't build wonders. Or at least early on you can't build wonders. I mean you can try and rush wonders, you'll fail, but you can't build wonders. Like if you look at this. How many wonders does my cap have? It has the Hubble Space Telescope, which I actually hard built. I didn't need an engineer for that. I used the engineer for Neuschwanstein, which is it's a pretty good wonder. Thinking about it, I probably should have saved it for Hubble Space Telescope, but I still like this wonder, so. It's actually a good late game happiness wonder. So, I mean, yeah, so. All my seeds of castles, I mean, that's only what? That's only like four, or it might be even be eight happiness, but it's some culture and some gold, so I guess that's nice, but. Yeah, I still can't think, I honestly can't think about, um, there was one more thing that, and it's like a key difference, I guess, but I don't know. It's, it's not really important, I guess. It's not important enough for me to remember. But I guess for now, I'll just, I'll show my empire. Because, I mean, that's, those are like the differences, or the two main differences, I guess, really, when playing deity AI versus multiplayer. But, now I guess I'll, show my empire and what allow me to win. So my capital is Gao, size 37, still growing. I'm working all the guilds, all the scientist slots, and all the engineering slots. I'm not working the merchant slots because merchants aren't really that great. I actually get an engineer sometime, but oh yeah, there's a penalty because freaking artists uh what do what do you call it? Uh, arts funding is passed. Hate that so much but Oh, I remember what it was. World Congress. None of these are important, really. Historical landmarks is actually good for me because I have some academies, but it's not really important. Arts funding is actually detrimental, but I never got the chance to propose to repeal. What is good is scholars in residence because if you get, if you manage to get, like, if you manage to be able to propose something, as soon as you can propose scholars and residents, assuming like this is early on. So like if you or if an RAI founds the World Congress and you're one of the people who can propose a vote, propose scholars and residents. Because not many of the civilizations like dislike that. Or they necessarily flat out dislike it. Like un unlike some civilizations will dislike standing army tax. Some will dislike natural or heritage sites. Some will dislike religion or ideology. Some will dislike sciences funding. Some will even dislike cultural heritage sites and historical landmarks, but some may even dislike arts funding, like Korea and Babylon, but I mean, so scholars and residents, along with research agreements, are really going to help bolster your science, like to compare to the science of the deity AI. So like when I look at science per turn, mine's probably going to be around average right now, but because I'm only on four cities compared to like every other civilization, I'm it's a lot more useful science, I guess I would say. But scholars and residents is also really important. But again, I'm going to go back to just like a quick like show of my empire. So guys, size thirty seven. Um, I really couldn't move anywhere to start. I think I settled in place. I was thinking of moving on to stone, but. That would get rid of a stone, and I planned on going Quarry Pantheon anyway, so I could found a religion which is still strong. Like Protestantism is not just in my cities, but also I spread to the city states down here before Austria took them, and they spread to these two cities on their own. I'm making 18 gold a turn from religion, and also my religion is gaining me. I have one garden, and then I have four shrines. So right now I'm getting six happiness from my religion, which is not bad. And I'm getting a ton of faith from quarries, because it's not just in my cap. Well, I actually have no quarry faith in my cap, because I plan to academies on these, but I'm getting quarry faith from here, which I'm, I am working these tiles, so I'm getting a quarry faith from here, quarry faith from these two. I settled on marble, but I don't get the faith, unfortunately, because it's not a quarry. I still get the production from a stoneworks, I think. No, I'm actually not entirely sure, but... Oh, no, oh. This is another thing. Buying, like, resources. Because in a multiplayer game, if you have no coal, you're kind of screwed because other people aren't really going to sell you coal because they need them for factories. But AI, sort of like how you can sell luxuries to AI, you could buy coal from AI. And that's why I'm at negative four now. I bought four coal, built four factories. The deal ran out, and now 
I'm in a deficit, but I still have the factory, so. And I didn't need to buy aluminum, thankfully. Most of the time I do get aluminum. It's always coal that I don't get. And uranium. I don't I didn't get uranium, but I bought uranium from an AI. So I could buy a uh what do you call it? So I could buy a nuclear plant. So I could build spaceship parts quicker. I have a solar plant in this city. I don't have anything in this city, so I can actually show the solar plant. Yeah, that's this. But yeah, um, is there anything else really? Oh, I guess I can show off like social policies. Tradition, obviously, that's really you go tradition 95% of the time. It's really the best one, both short and long term. I guess, well, no, liberty is better short term, and that's why you only really go, you don't go honor and piety at all. But you go liberty, I guess, if you plan on doing a ton of early war, and you really have no choice but to war your neighbor. Which thinking, I probably should have warred Bismarck, especially considering they're like basically in second place. They're going to win tourism in 30 turns, and they have some of the spaceship finished, and they have the most cities. I probably could have warred them early on. I wouldn't have been able to war ARAI. Look how far away Vienna and Palenque are. I would have probably just warred, taken like Hamburg, Berlin, maybe Frankfurt, if he's bugging me by like sending units from there. But I didn't, and I didn't need to apparently, so. I don't, I honestly don't remember what I was talking about. What was, what was I saying? Oh yeah, social policies. But I still wouldn't have taken liberty for that, because I have three good tradition cities, and I managed to find a fourth good tradition city on this island. Or, I managed to find that island and settle a fourth good tradition city. And that's really all I need. Four city tradition is really the best strategy and just brave new world stuff. So. My filler policy was commerce. I grabbed the opening and then grabbed wagon trains. I like commerce much be so much because the opener of commerce is boost gold output and capital by 25%. Monarchy is, oh no, what was it? Because... I'm, I must be seeing things. For whatever reason, I thought there was a policy in tradition that gave you a 25% output. But I, gu I guess it was, it's plus one gold for every two citizens. For whatever reason, I thought it was 25% gold. Is it not? Jesus, I got that wrong this whole time. Because I was always thinking it was smart to stack the 25% with the 25%. But no, I'm just flat out wrong. Huh, that's interesting. I don't know. I thought I must have seen the fifteen percent and just put it on that. I don't know, but commerce is still strong in general because gold output. Like, how much gold am I making in my capital? One hundred twenty. So that's like, can I see, see my fire for capital? Twenty five percent. Or well, ooh, that was loud. I apologize, but so that's probably what a that should be a bit over. 25, close to like 30 gold, I think, if my math is right. Should be about 30 gold extra, which is nice. It is definitely nice. And I'm not even using, I'm using all food trade odds. If I used like, if I used gold trade odds, it'd be a lot more. Anyway, back to here. And then obviously I took the opener for rationalism, I took secularism. Those two policies are necessities. Like if you, if you are forced to take the bare bones of rationalism, or well, those are the bare bones, but... Ideally, you can hit this, and you can hit humanism and free thought, and sovereignty. This one isn't really good, but if you have those four, you might as well get that, because the finisher is, it's a free technology, which is nice, but you also get to purchase great scientists with faith, which I use my faith to purchase missionaries to spread around, actually. I was thinking of purchasing a great engineer, but I didn't, so I probably should have, but ideally, you these two are the bare minimum. If you, you have to, you basically, you pretty much have to take rationalism. But if you want to take, you don't need the whole rationalism tree, but if you want to take the bare minimum, you take the opener and secularism. Simply because secularism is, can I see how much I'm gaining from that? I can't, no. But secularism is powerful. I can just count. I can literally just count. All right, so that's how many, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 
So that's 28 extra signs in my capital. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 28, that is 12 is 24. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's 16. So 28, 24, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's 32, 28, 24. So 32, 28, that's 60. 24, that is 84 signs, which that's nearly... And that's also compounding with every other modifier as well. So like the bonus happiness modifier, which is from the rationalism opener, is also really good. And if I had free thought, that would also be good as well. Ideally, if you ideally in rationalism you would take humanism free thought as well. And then if you have the time, you should fill out rationalism, because sovereignty is also pretty good. That's it's probably better than this one. Because I mean, gold from your land trade routes only goes externally. If it was internally, then this would still be, this would be a lot better. But this is like, this should add up to about like 20 or 30 signs, which is about as much as the 25% just from opening commerce. But yeah, if you have the time, finish it. Ideally, you get these three. But if you need to take the minimum, just take secularism. Because I had to use the artist to fill out ideology, which the first tier tenants I got all... Happiness, there aren't really any, those are really where the happiness policies are in order and in most ideologies, actually. There's actually a good level two tenet for happiness, but there's usually only one. Freedom has two, I guess, but, I mean, I don't know, but, and you can only pick four level two tenets, so most of your happiness or ideology will be in the first tier. In fact, I didn't even grab the good happiness in the second tier, because I needed factory science, which is good, and production, which is really good. In fact, five year plan is probably better than factory science, but I took factory science because, simply because I guess it was a deity game, and I figured I might as well get as much science as possible. So also, the last policy, I could have taken internal trade routes, but I took spaceship, space flight pioneers. Actually, I got space flight pioneers when I finished telecommunications, so I basically ball mobile tactics and I had an engineer same for the SS engine and I was waiting just and it was like five turns for me to complete the tech so as soon as I completed the tech I engineered the part and now it's done so that's really my culture wasn't that great if you have better culture you could probably fill out more rationalism fill out more ideology maybe even I guess fill out more of your filler policy if you take like patronage aesthetics piety for filler policies other good ones exploration if it's like archipelago or small or large islands Arch exploration would have actually been good for me because I'm three. I have three coastal cities, but I didn't really take it because Germany sell Dortmund and really fucked my like access to the sea. So I don't know. Another good one is actually um Piety's good. I could have gone Piety. I was actually thinking about it because I had my own religion and because I had good faith per turn. But I just ignored that and then ended up planting academies on those. But I probably shouldn't have in hindsight, but patronage is good, but I didn't really meet all the city states. And also with Austria in the game, you know they're going to be... The only city states I met were Ensenada, Revo, Yerevan, Manila, and Singapore, which Singapore isn't really doing well. The only are city states in the map. I would have had to meet these two, which I didn't through exploration. I would have had to meet Hanoi, Bratislava, Mombasa... I'm pretty sure those are city states. Quebec City. Oh, wait. Maybe not. I don't know, honestly. Oh, it's because they're puppeted. That's why they show that. So I didn't meet these three. Those were the only four I met for the whole game. So I didn't go patronage. But it is good if you meet city states and patronage. The opener policy is good. None of these are really good. Um. So, yeah. But piety... The opener isn't really that good. It's some of these policies that are good. So pat patronage is the opposite of piety in that aspect. <coughs> Aesthetics is actually pretty good. Like, I mean, it's obviously culture, but culture is equal to science in this game. Because if I had more culture, I'd be able to fill out more of rationalism. I'd be able to get my factory science quicker. So, and in a way, faith is as well. If I filled out piety, I would have been able... Well, that's also assuming... If I had rationalism fit out, and I had good faith, I'd be able to buy great scientists. But still only like two or three. So, 
And you can't go both piety and aesthetics, because you need to hit rationalism eventually, but... <coughs> oh, jeez. I'm speaking too much, but I'm probably going to end the game. That's I guess I just wanted to really show, like, what I did. And, well, mainly show because this was my first time being dated AI, or at least getting a legit win and not just the Shoshone trick, but... Also compare differences between multiplayer and deity AI, I guess, or single player deity AI. Yeah, those are really the main differences. There's nothing else I can think of. That's it. So, I'm going to end the game. Let's see, turn 2, 12, 18, A, 4, AD, and I'm going to launch the spaceship. Hopefully this doesn't break it. So I got African King, Flawless Strategy, Yuri Ka. <coughs> oh. Don't click this, it's going to crash your game. Info, that's this. But yeah, so, demographics. As you can see, I'm not doing too well in demographics. The only people behind me are, I think, Denmark and Maya. Basically because Maya got their capital nuked, but... I'm obviously less than soldiers. I didn't war a single time this game as well. Which is actually pretty nice, but <coughs> one everyone's at one hundred percent approval. Literally everyone, so that doesn't matter. Learn to see I was actually fourth, but I mean I knew how to get the spaceship out faster. So ranking, I got Champagne or Charlemagne. Champagne. I didn't even get Augustus Caesar for win on deities. I oh well, it doesn't really matter. Replay. We can do the map. I'll just show it. I'm not gonna speak over it. <coughs> Partially because I want to watch as well. So obviously not a lot happened with us. We can look at graphs. Score isn't really important. I just want to see a few, I guess. Let's see. Culture per turn. The most was, that's Germany. They had the most. This is probably where cultural heritage, so, well, no. What the hell happened here? They went from about 200 to this much. I don't know what the hell happened there with Germany's culture. That's not cultural heritage sites because is that it might be though. I don't know, but their culture dipped a ton here. They might have had this might be cultural heritage sites, this might be a golden I honestly don't know what the fuck happened with their culture. Who am I? I am red. So I was obviously low culture the whole game basically, so <coughs> like Germany at about 1080 was making about the same culture I was now so culture food no that's is actually a terrible graph gold turn might be interesting yeah so mine was a slow rise to about I'm at 158 right now so Germany was at one point making 1000 gold a turn so that's a lot of gold no one's ever going to be able to achieve that um, let's see. military might might be interesting yeah, everyone's like shoots up near the end because they got super advanced units. Mine stayed the same, really. Mine somehow decreased at that point. But yeah, Germany's. So they clearly weren't doing well in whatever war they were in. I don't know what it was, but were they? They were probably fighting. Not Denmark. They were doing horrible the whole again. They might. They might have been fighting Austria. That's probably why. But yeah, I guess number of cities. So I was obviously at. Three for most of the game, and then four. This is when I built my fourth. So that was probably around turn 100. 
Germany just kept going up. They had the most, and they their most was I think twenty seven. So that's a lot of saves. I mean, so that's what twenty seven two hundred seventy percent increase in tech cost, or no two hundred seventy percent increase in social policy cost, and. 135% increased in technology cost. While for me it was only 40% and 20%. Number of known texts. Let's see where I was. So I started off behind and th I don't know what happened here. This might have been when I got universities but for whatever reason I just streamlined a bunch here. And then obviously I slowly rose to the top. But this was actually at one point I was at the top but then Germany sped up. But Again, I know I knew what to do with those texts. So, um, number of policies. So I obviously stayed low the whole time. I ended up with like seventeen and a half. I don't know how that's a half. So Germany and Maya were the most, which is interesting because Maya is only on three cities. So, yeah, that's actually really interesting. Population. This is an important one. So Germany was obviously leaning in population because we know population is science, but. So at the end, I was around 120-ish. He was at 500, which is a lot. But. And then actually, who is second? Austria. Austria, then Portugal. So I was at both Denmark and Maya. Their population just completely died. Well, Maya got nuked and Denmark got their cities taken. But Production? This might be... Yeah, Germany was obviously at the most for basically the whole game. And then my production shop near the end. I, this was when I got five-year plan. You, we can see that. And then, obviously, Denmark and Maya just crumpled. Weird thing is, I was always about the same as Maya, I guess. I don't know, but... Science per turn, this one will be interesting. So, Germany was, near then, was earning about 3,000. Seems about right. Uh, and that's that goes with the modifier, because Germany, I think, oh, I said, what, 270% extra science cost because of the amount of C's they had? And then Austria, so they're earning about, something happened here. There might have been a city nuke, but they were in about 2,000. And then I was, and then I was with, um, I was about, I'm at what, right now 1,160. So I'm right at around Portugal's level. And we can see on the minimap how many more cities Portugal, Portugal has. So Maya, oh geez, I was ahead of Maya for pretty much the whole thing. Denmark was doing terrible, so yeah, they never really went above 400, it seems like. Total culture, that's the wrong one. I want to see culture return. I think I already looked at that. Um, That's it, I guess. I don't know. Unit maintenance, I was obviously lowest. Actually, Austria had way more unit maintenance than Germany, so I guess Germany's military really like failed. Get that out of here. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm actually going to main menu here, I mean. That's, there's really nothing else to show. This was it, I mean. So I have this game, I have this game saved. Also, this game I probably won't continue, mainly because where, where would I find the time? I still have to finish that DLC mod. So, yeah, I'm going to end it here. Um, I guess I should show the settings I used as the last thing. These were the same settings I used. I didn't change anything. I did random got ASCII up just for the randomness, I guess. <clears throat> um, Pangea is probably the most balanced map. That was more so fractal, but that's to be expected. Small. Um, that's normally multiplayer size, but I guess you could do standard. Smaller standard really is the best. Deity, obviously. Quick, if most single player people probably play Epic or Marathon. Yeah. Advanced up, I'm, there were actually some advanced stuff I changed. Um, I put sea level to low instead of medium so there's more land. I put on strategic balance instead of standard and I did get both my luxuries or both my strategic resources. I left every single victory type on. I didn't even disable time because I knew the game was going to end before then. And then obviously quick combat, quick movement. So that's just standard. Bam, getting it there. This was just to show off like I guess the difference between Deity and Deity AI and multiplayer and what I did to beat it and just 
I don't know. So, yep. I guess that's it for today. Tomorrow it is then.